here we go. We've got number 15 on the map list hiding in uh, the water weed is a hippopotamus. And also for our birders, we've got some African jacanas and a gray heron. So we've seen black headed and a gray heron today. And uh, we're a bit closer to the, and look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Waiting to spike a poor frog or fish that happens to come close to it. And uh, we've got, we're a bit closer to those buffaloes now that we saw at a distance. And around the buffaloes, there's also some birds. So keeping the mammal people and the bird people happy today. So there we go. There's a yellow-billed stork and some sacred ibis. Oh, that might look sticky, old man. I'm um, also just checking. You never know what other bird species are on the edge of a marsh like this. We might get lucky with a crake. Oh, wattle starlings flying in. Gonna land around the buffalo, I'm guessing. Or they are not going to fly, going to fly over the buffalo. So wattled starlings, that's another one. No ox peckers on these buffalo, I suppose, with so many animals to choose from, uh, to land upon. Uh, buffalo aren't as important. Oh, he's a grumpy looking sod, that one. He has not taken his eyes off us since we stopped. Okay, let's see what else. Um, so we, we forgot one other species, which is why, um, mammal species, which is why we're on 15. Um, and there are some impala around that we did see earlier that I completely forgot about. Here we go. Hello, impalas. There's just so much going on. It's so wonderful. So this is the, the famous marsh that we're on here. Oh, what was that behind there? It's a spurwing goose as well. There's another bird species for everyone. Spurwing goose. So, yeah. Now go, just come to the ones to the left slightly. Those are a bit better. There we go, a bit more. There we go. Oh, a sacred ibis flying through, but there we go. Spurwing goose, or spurwing geese, should I say. There's more than one. And then we've got a double whammy on the bird front, on the stump in front of us. We have a Rupel's starling, it looks like. Let me just wait for him to turn his eye. Yes, in the, is that Rupel's in the front? Or they're both glossies? No. I think they might both be glossies. Yes, they are. They're lesser blue-eared glossy starlings. Enjoying the morning sunshine. And of course, a whole host of mammal species around us that we are, are counted on really. Oh, what's happening with that? Ebos. There's a little one in there. There's a baby one in there. In that mud, he just rolled over. I said, you always got to be look very carefully around wetlands like this. Uh, not the Id most ideal birding climate with the wind blowing, but you never know. Remember, hashtag Safari Live. Uh, if you've got any questions, oh, bird flying, a battalier by the looks of things. Yes, it is. You got him there, Dave. Another one for the bird list this morning. I wonder how many we on. Could someone let me know? Hashtag Safari Live. Let me know how many birds we've seen. James is wondering, are there any bird species that occur both in Kenya and South Africa, but with different coloration? Uh, not that I've seen. Oh, actually, I lie. I absolutely, I'm fibbing. I'm fibbing. There, there's a very cool one, which we see a lot around our camp. And uh, I will get it up for you now while Dave is doing a wonderful job following that battle. Yeah. Okay. Now, it's a bird we see at Juma, 
and it is the speckled mouse bird. But the cool thing about the speckled mouse bird here is they have a white cheek. So there's a different color variation. It's, whoopsie, there we go. It's quite minor, but there we go. Uh, here they all have white cheeks. In South Africa, they lack that white cheek. Speckled mouse bird. We see them a lot around our camp. Not so much down here in the open grassland. They prefer a little bit of forestation around. Okay, now let's see what else can we see from here. Let me just use my far lookers. Uh, the baboons, waterbuck. I'm trying to see if we can find any other birds hiding. Oh, they're far away though. It's, uh, and they're moving too fast, some swallows. Okay, I'm going to have to move quickly to answer Lauren from Illinois' question about the differences between the gazelle species. Oh wait, we're being charged first. Hi guys. So this is males running around being nutcases. Very similar to their human counterparts when chasing women. Okay, now where did they go? There were some Grant's gazelles quite close by. Okay, beyond the baboons, there are some Grant's gazelles. Unfortunately, this, the light is quite harsh, so I'm just trying to see if there's a Tommy close to them. There's not. But the Grant's gazelles are, are quite a lot bigger uh, than the Tommies, and uh, they're a lot paler. Do you see them, Dave? They're just to the left of that wildebeest you are following, behind the baboons. So there we go. Those are Grant's gazelles. Horns are much bigger. Their body size is much closer to an impala uh, than the... Oh, there's a Tommy behind that Grant. So you can see the Tommy in the distance. Um, far more, more boldly colored with that black stripe being very pronounced on the Tommies. So Grant's are paler and much, much bigger. But just under the size of an impala uh, where there is uh, the, the Tommies. And uh, they also form quite a large... with you. You are you are such a grumpy looking. Oh dear, we just seem to have lost Brent there for a moment. I'm sure they'll be back soon. Sounds like they're having a wonderful morning, a lot going on there. Um, I'm still driving around scanning, trying to find any signs of predators. Taylor doesn't sound like she's had any luck just yet. She's still moving around. Oh. 